Welcome to Demystifying Gay Porn. My name is Ike Grande, and if you watch gay porn, I've definitely helped to get off. And the content creator and porn personality sitting next to me also has Penny Blazing. How you doing? I'm good. I yeah? can't complain yet. Yeah, you can't <laughs> complain. But if you did complain, would people listen? It's a nifty talent of mine, so yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what's going on? How are you? Um, Life is good. Yeah. I can't complain. Um, just... Doing my thing, recording. Let's get down to the nitty gritty, right? So people would know you from gay porn. People would know you from uh, Himeros, from OnlyFans, from Treasure Island, from what other studios? Champ Robinson um, Studio, Vision X. Yes. I guess you gave me the whole just... <laughs> yeah? Well, OnlyFans, right? You yeah, have your own OnlyFans fans. page. You have your own... Uh, just for fans. Okay. Champ Robinson, Vision X. Is that just one? No. Used to be the website, now it's a series uh-huh. under Vision X. Okay. So that Yeah, the whole five hands. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> cool. What um, got you into porn? Like a couple years ago, I knew I met a dude by the name Joseph Fox. <laughs> I know Joseph Fox. Yes. Hi. <laughs> Miss you. <laughs> Contentious or okay? It was okay. Like okay. it was really nice. Like well, I mean now. <laughs> Oh, oh no, we're good. You're good. We're okay, good. good. That's good. We're all good. I like that. We've been good. It's just he moved to Atlanta. Mm. I'm and I'm here in shitty New York City. Shitty New York City. And it's been cold for like the last few days. It's shitty. yeah, I know, but it's winter. <laughs> you know, it's kind of we got lucky for a couple years because we had very mild winters, maybe mm-hmm. one day in the teens. But yeah, these past couple of days have been rough. Yeah, like I feel totally ripped off. I didn't even get snow. Yeah, you know what? That would have been the payoff. Like, I I can deal with the 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 winter. Give me snow. Yes, I like. I'm like snow or blazing sun. Yeah, there's no in between. Spring's okay. I can deal with. You know what? I I've actually come to terms with all four seasons at this point. Oh no! Because fall kind of like prepares you for i don't care about the foliage i don't care about any of that garbage like i think it's beautiful but i don't need to be like oh the foliage you know i don't need to do that stuff yeah, no. but the idea of temperature like slowly getting into the winter and then slowly coming into spring into summer i enjoy those like when i went to miami it was like a little bit like it felt like fucked because it was just like wait it's december why well, no it's january yeah and it's like warm and like, but I hear there, like people kind of like go through like this, like skip of a season. They feel like, like they're missing something. They've also had record low recently this, this year. What's a record low in Miami? 31, 32 in Florida, in Florida, even Texas, Austin, or I forgot what they just got yeah. hit with a huge snowstorm. Yeah. That snow came out of nowhere. Yeah. Like, yeah snow, but we're not. The whole world's going to blow up. <laughs> Basically. I mean, <laughs> I'm on the internet now, so it can blow up. (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, all right. So I'm sorry. We digress. You've met Joseph Ox. Yes. And he he was like my first introduction to the whole scene. Okay. And like, he kind of like guided me a little bit throughout it and just helped me network. And then I did that, like the first, like, group of like guys i filmed with was that like do you remember a long time ago that super bowl party no i may have seen it was it an uh like yes, a content was, creator yeah it was um, a content creator collaboration like a, okay a, um super bowl orgy was uh, it in vegas uh-uh, it was here in new york i wasn't invited <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry, I was, sorry. I, was, I was just i was just a plus one <laughs> <laughs> So it was like something that didn't even mean to ha- I didn't even mean for it to happen like that. I didn't. It happened. It was so good. How was it? It was hot. Yeah. It was really hot. Did you guys watch the game? Um, <laughs> God, you said Super Bowl party, I assume. I mean, we. we Did we, you at least keep score? Of the loads. Okay. So there were, <laughs> there were touchdowns. There were a whole bunch of. There were touchdowns. There were fumbles. <laughs> there were. There were. There were fouls, but punts, we, we were no, okay punts with the fouls. Is, punts are baseball. That's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Cool. So that was your first, like, really big thing. Yeah. Um, I then you were, like, a good few of the guys, but I don't know if I should mention them. About what? Be mentioned. I don't know if I can say, like, names. I, why like, not? Names. Yeah. Why not? They've, like, if they've been on the podcast, even better. But, you know. All okay. right. So, like, I felt that was with Joseph Ox, mm-hmm. Max Connors, yeah, um, Max. Derek Klein. Yeah. 
um avatar yeah um, they've all been on the podcast amazing yeah that was that was like my first and now you actually joseph fox has not been i've he he moved before but yeah. he has an interesting he has an interesting story too <laughs> you know we he's already he's like yeah we can talk about where i work and all that stuff like that's oh my gosh that's what i enjoy i enjoy the idea that yes you guys are sexy yes you fuck like animals yes and well but you also do stuff outside of it yes yes. right like you weren't born a porn star or a porn content creator oh no what were you born i'm from the bronx okay um born and raised my whole life i'm in school i work and i'm athletic (laughs) what about growing up i was growing up in the bronx it's good one day and then bad another like it's like it's like city city blues Mm -hmm. it's like oh you can feel really great one day if you like get five dollars and you're walking around a cute little area in the city and like you can get like a million things like that's what it was like it felt like that but then like i think the transportation sucked as a kid Mm. because like it just i just felt lost everywhere as a as growing up but like it wasn't really bad for me in the city it was more like groups groups i hung out with if things got bad or if like things were good it's more of like a choose your own adventure type of Mm, okay way for me my experience did you grow up gay like did you come out early or actually i was outed by some bitch who took my fucking phone the first day of high school because i was looking at grinder (laughs) damn oh there's a dick i was like so you got outed because somebody took your phone yeah. And you were on Grinder at 14, right? Because fr- I'm not the only one. Freshman? Okay. <laughs> I was All right, so it happens. All right. You know, this is... <laughs> How long ago was this, by the way? Do you mind if I ask? 2011. Okay, so 2011. You're 14 in 2011. Jesus Christ. And, yeah. well... I only say this because kids get on Grinder and they don't realize they want to have a good time. But the people they talk to, if they don't know, like you can have, you can make them have a really bad time, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know? And, and I have to sleep with that on my conscience. Well, how do still. you, or how did you get around? Like, I, I forget. I, I don't remember what you have to put in on a Grinder account in order to be like able a to Google account. Like, and like, um, a Facebook account, you just gotta like, Forge a few numbers. Oh, I sound so terrible. <laughs> Do not try this at home. You so know you what? Just forge a few things okay, on the right. app, and just like I guess now with the AI apps, is like you can make yourself look way older than you are. So it's like a little bit like. <laughs> so basically, Grinders' um, way of detecting whether or not you're underage is faulty or shoddy yeah okay and like but like for me i you i kind of did the craigslist thing and like back page and just like typed in like a little paragraph what i was looking for and then like you get the little emails and then like but like with certain things on there you couldn't like word it out you had to like drop like little hinted numbers mm. around just to like so you wait. remember that um craigslist yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Was, you, the m for m and all that crap like yeah. um nsa encounters and all that yeah, i remember that <laughs> that was casual encounters casual encounters yeah i you know i always thought craigslist was really shady like you can go you can go any way um so I, i'm kind of glad that i mean i remember manhunt manhunt was big when i was younger mm-hmm. talk about fucking aging myself gay.com was fucking huge gay.com that sounds like a scam site gay.com that's all you had to be in 1998-99 because there weren't that many websites. So gay.com is where you would go and you would message people and you, you met people through gay.com. Crazy shit. And then here's the best part. And then you would print on MapQuest where you were going to go if you were going to meet somebody. <laughs> then you take, you take the paper printed thing and you're driving. You know, this is before. It was rough. And before that, men, I was looking at this old magazine there were classified ads. So you would write looking for, like, the way you write your profile on Grinder. you would write, um, you know, good-looking man seeking um, another good-looking man with a job, no wife, no kids, you know, shit like that. And then people would find it, and they would write you. I feel like that's a big hit and mess with that description. Well, like, 
it's like you know like everyone has like their own constructs of like a good looking man yeah or like, oh, yeah. it's like so you god knows who's gonna show up yeah and then i i don't know how i i mean i could only assume then you shove a picture of yourself in the, the thing and you send it to them and if but regardless that's, the, that's like a week and a half answers. before you actually meet somebody yeah that's fucking like, crazy gotta, like background check it yeah way. And for like, that i go to bars really effectively background checks like <laughs> i feel like an effective background check publicly yes. is at instagram facebook the apps <laughs> um all right so you were so you were on grinder you were um were you meeting up with people at no, that age, no, you were just you were just, just looking at dicks. Shit. Okay, I was just okay. like literally like processing information, learning how to be gay. Okay, like, all right. Literally, that's what it was. And then like I've been gay my whole life. Like you knew early. I knew it. Like um, I would watch like Disney, and like, I would always like picture myself with a guy. Like and like anytime, I was just like I couldn't really like picture a girl like that. And so like high school was like that opportunity for me to maybe like all right find others and like. I'm not going to say it was like a, like a naive time or I'm not going to say it's like um, people weren't like themselves, but like it, there was more gay guys in that school. There were. There were gay guys okay. in that school, but like you just like, it was the first day of school. You didn't know anybody. You had to like, but like the way it happened, it was just like, so, all right. I'm patient zero for, for being gay in the school. I was just going to ask if there were a pretty good group of gay people in your high school because I, I kind of had 12 the, a good number. 12 is a great number. 12 is a good I think 12 is a great number, especially that's a gang. Yeah, <laughs> that's a baseball like, team. They were like that's a lot of things. Grades. And okay. Then, but there were like more than one school in the building. Okay. So it was just like, they were scattered. When I was in high school, we had, um, I would say almost 10 to 12 kids too. And that was, mm-hmm. see, I don't think we realize how fortunate we are to have like gone to school in an area that's urban. Be- you think of a lot of different things, but you're exposed to so many different yeah. things as well. Um, yeah, like, I couldn't take sex education because like they knew I was gay. So it was like, it's not going to oh. They didn't feel like it would help me. So they just exempt me from what? The class. And I was just like, they should have gay sex education. Or yeah, something. Gay sex education. They should have like, um, gender understanding training mm. like i just feel like all these things were like i'm glad they're having them now some of them are getting outlawed like that shit with like the ap african classes and oh yeah um, fucking florida bro florida's on another <laughs> planet I, they or at least they should be at this point <laughs> miami and florida are two different places I'm yeah curious. but <laughs> here's th- i my family's cuban and uh they vote predominantly the way florida votes so yeah oh and think about it and think about it this way too when you have cuban americans you have people that left a country Mm -hmm. and built they built like their own little city in south florida and miami off of hate because they hated the government in cuba so much that they didn't want to leave their country but they had to come here and they they made the best of it basically so yeah. florida was swamp but they built uh, the cuban americans that built the successful ones built it and made it what it is and everyone speaks spanish down there not surprised i think that they think it's an, uh, an extension of cuba at some point yeah. but now they have there's there's an influx of south americans that come in mm. and south americans and uh cuban americans predominantly vote Republican because socialist governments are socialist leading governments in South America, Mm. Miami. Yes, it feels different, but there's a lot of money there. And whenever, wherever there's a lot of money, there's a lot of, well, we got to protect our money. We got to make sure our money's not going anywhere. I was walking around there. I was like, yo, I knew everyone had money, but it looks like no one's spending it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Great example. Yeah, absolutely. Great example of, of what's supposed to happen right trickle down and all that shit and what doesn't happen Mm -hmm. but whatever i digress too um growing up in in um in the bronx right you had how would you say your experience was in high school was it worldly because i'm assuming you had a little bit of everything i had a little it was worldly like um outside of that like i had like these programs i was involved in and like the the activity after school activities I I was definitely I definitely had a, like a large exposure to like the types of people in the world. Mm-hmm. I feel like as a kid, the friends I met, like I went to church in all different kinds of places, learned how to like do religious things all different types of ways, and like going here to camp or like going here to um, 
to freaking just like swim or like whatever like i had that large but like at the same time um i wasn't really the easiest kid to deal with like i i literally go on in high school if someone said something to me i would just say something back because that's just a basic function of human connection yeah but they tried to come for my neck so i came for their for their car their house everything so (laughs) wait what does that mean um, they fuck with me, so I fuck with them, and it didn't really make things easier. Eye for an eye doesn't really. But like, being gay and like growing up and learning the things I I do like, I thought I can like try to be sassy and just like it did not work out in my favor. Outside of high school, like, because I feel like I hung out with kids outside of high school. Because like on field trips, we would all be best friends. Everyone would act like they know each other and do all this shit. But like by the time we get back, it's just like like everybody disperses. <laughs> Well, you know, like the end of the scene of um, the ending scene of Breakfast Club, where it's like, oh, we're all different, and like we all have all these things in common. Oh, what do we do when we get back to school? Don't talk to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was, it was it was very much that kind of like ecosystem in mm. the school. Like it was like a very um, textbook type of environment, but like everyone like mixed and mingled every now and then. But like, and the teachers would try to like mix everything but like we as a student body the students try to like it just worked out okay so you're gay and you find somebody you like did it happen in high school did it happen i mean i'm i'm like um what is it what is the word what is the word um i was emotionally dismissive at the time i witnessed things from other gay people that I saw that I felt like I should have to move. So mm-hmm. I felt like maybe it probably wouldn't be the best thing to have a boyfriend during this time. I did fuck. No shade. Y'all know me. I fucked a bunch of older dudes. Whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's what kind of like kept it like at least if I can't be in a relationship with a dude, the next best thing is just like experiment. With your experimenting, do you find that you like older dudes? I do. Do you think that that established from there or? Well, I'm convinced I was somebody's grandfather and I died and I got re and just like. Still have that grandfather energy. Yeah. <laughs> that big grandfather. That big grandfather big granddaddy energy. energy. <laughs> big bad energy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, do not put that in there. <laughs> <laughs> I like guys of all ages, don't get me wrong, but I've always been able to connect better with an older dude for some reason. It's just like, I don't have daddy issues, never had a daddy, don't need one. Being gay, being black and all this shit, like I literally like had to watch growing up. No one really showed me how to do anything. I kind of just had to like process the information, deal with it the best way I can and just. What about your family? They support me. They, I think my family was not, not supportive, but I had other siblings that made bigger things. So like the focus was on them. It wasn't until after I graduated high school, I started like being like very vocal about myself. And then like my mom didn't really care for that. And then I went to camp and I, I met a guy and like my mom didn't really care about that. So after camp, I went upstate, and then I met a dude while I was in college, and we were together for, like, three years. He broke my heart, and then my mom was, like, my mom kind of, like, got it. She was, like, oh. It took that broken heart for her to really see that, like, all right, he is who he is, mm. but that doesn't mean he's not doesn't deserve to be loved. My sister, she chooses when most of the time she chooses to support me. I think it's more we've gotten closer since we've grown up and just like a lot a lot of things are like it's like um a shock to her mm-hmm. some of them and it's like a little bit intense like doing porn so you <laughs> so they know yeah okay and they're and they're cool with it as cool as they can be as cool as they can be but like strictly to my mom it's like oh I model I I I I consult <laughs> Like, I'm no shade, and she's not stupid. She probably knows exactly what I'm doing. And, like, I give advice. (laughs) I give and receive advice. (laughs) I'm curious as to your experience, because you've been doing porn now for how many years? When did I meet Joe? 
you did a solo scene because like that first scene like when here I, with, actually yeah with not the, this particular room but yeah here is this was out yeah i mean this undisclosed base <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, your first thing was in this in this undisclosed place. Oh shit! Full circle. <laughs> I remember. You know why? Because I backlit you by accident. Um, great scene, but one of the pictures I took of you, I think the light was coming in from the back, and it didn't look as good as it could have. Mm, I've was, learned from my lessons. That was with Avatar. No, this was you alone. Me alone. Oh, the jerk off scene. Yeah, that was it the was first a jerk time. off scene, and then that scene. Yes, and that was yeah. that was 2019. It was 2019 because, like, around 2020, I kind of got fired from my job for it. Oh, <laughs> yeah, boy! I was All working right. at this not like at this nonprofit. We're Holy not hell! Talk. We're not going to mention them. Okay, but they found out. They found out, and it wasn't really a problem until like people started talking about it from my understanding of it and like i'm probably gonna be like oh that's not how it went down and shit like this is how i received it <laughs> um people were talking about it and i guess i'm gonna very carefully say with very few people that wanted my company i chose not to and just like it just like this wouldn't have happened any other way like no one really gave a fuck when they knew found out about it and now so like that's my moment with that okay but everyone knows everything now with like what i'm doing like school work my 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 rugby team they everyone knows okay everyone's like supportive everyone's like friendly and respective okay so that's everybody outside of porn mm -hmm. how have porn models producers your experience how have they reacted or um treated you as a newcomer i feel like i'm really seeing the and it has its negatives too but like fuck the negative mm. um it really i really see the camaraderie with um when they see that you're actually trying to like do good and like you're doing your work and like people see that and want to like invest in that and just like that is like really supportive and like it's awesome because like all of us we are doing porn and everything but like it really helps that like that's not the only thing and like we allow ourselves to like tell each other what we're doing like it's like a cute little community this is fight club i just burped this is fight club and like we're in fight club but we're not going to talk about no one fight talks club. about fight club no one, no one talks about fight club really <laughs> <laughs> no I, it's very important i i was telling alex before alex cough is people interested and i'm like yeah absolutely people are interested and if they're not i don't know if you've seen the podcast recently but i'm doing history mm -hmm. it's really fucking hard yeah, you did like a phone thing no you did like a like a something with like phone sex oh well i do open lines okay open lines are when fans or people that um reach out to me and have like kinks and stuff like that will talk to me about them but <clears throat> season four has it's it's a little bit of model interviews a little bit of open lines but it's also history so i've I've started to do a, a historical point of view or perspective on people like me people like you people who direct or you know and and it's cyclical because this is not the only thing i do this is not the only thing you do uh we just happen to do it this is my day job yeah you know it's your, is it your day job too you go to school you do yeah. like you're balanced and you're juggling like a like lot of things a good five quarter of things going on that qualifies like a day job so it's like it's really just part of the full-time shtick with the history one thing that's really really hard to do or find is latin and black models yeah. there's no record there's no great record of Latin and black gay porn models. Yo, <laughs> yo. So I was on the Himro shoot and I I was saying the same exact thing in a way. I was like, yo, growing up, um, like I kind of mostly jerked off to white dudes because it's just like you growing like, and I'm sure there were like black porn stars yeah. and Latin porn stars and all this shit like that, but no shade the way I grew up and like, 
if you were listening way before and like you're up to this point like it's really something you don't really look for, look for especially when you're at that young age mm-hmm. you're um learning who you are and like no one in sight can help you unless you have gay friends which i didn't i had to figure it out myself and like jerking off to porn like white dudes white dudes white dudes like that's just mostly like you'll get your like black guy here or like a latino guy here and shit like that but like it's very clear but they all had they were shoved in like yeah diversity and their own and their stage names weren't even reflective of being black or or latin some of them weren't even in the got the credit in there like you you put all these other stars in it but like the star that like stood out you didn't really yeah no yeah and and it's black history month I tried. I've 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 tried to find models. I even did a deep dive uh this this Friday and Saturday and I just couldn't I couldn't find a good perspective. I, th- like you said, there are scenes they're out there but I think it's hard in general for gay porn because people didn't hold on to stuff um people that were in it what I'm finding all these producers and directors they didn't think there was going to be a value to any of this stuff. Mm-hmm. What made it valuable, in my opinion, was all the people that we lost to AIDS in the 80s, because then we lost an entire generation of people that could have taught us how to grow up as, you know, Latin, gay, uh, Latin, black, white, anything, how to grow up and be gay and be kind of well-rounded as a gay individual, you know, not just watching porn to be to gay porn to get educated, you know, watching porn, TV like i never watched an episode of sex in the city and somehow some way i know samantha's teachings so it's like these are the things i've had to leave horrible on. perspective by the way <laughs> i watched i watched all of her i watched sex in the city because i was like i need to understand i was having nostalgia for like the 2000s so late 90s and 2000s and i never really got into the show i knew it was fun i knew it was popular and new york city but then I watched it and I was like, God, what a horrible woman. And I, I don't mean that. I just mean like w- the things that she was showing women, a generation of women or the way it was just, it, it didn't, it didn't sit well with yeah. me. That, but that's my personal opinion. It doesn't have to. And Noah's Ark. Noah's Ark was. Cute. I remember that I show. Remember that yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like my mom blocked that show when she found out. I yeah. It, so I couldn't really watch it anymore. But, like, that was, like, the closest thing I had to, like, maybe something I can learn from. And, like, just like that. So, like. Tell me about, tell me a little bit about sex work and your your stance on sex work and advocacy, right? Because you, mm-hmm. you are an advocate of, of sex yes, workers. I am an advocate of sex workers. I think STD treatment should be free. I feel like sex workers are, like field workers and so many other things that like you don't even think of i've held conversations during like sex harassment training as a sex worker you get this perspective you see things are darker way more darker than they are it helps you like handle shit a little more i've been a sex worker i want to say since a young age because i feel like a shady way of saying you were underage <laughs> such a safe way were you just you know yeah okay all right i don't want to know how old but just that's, that's yeah, i was underage doing it a little bit okay so um not all of it was great but like i can honestly say like once you start to once sex work became a choice i think sting started to like go up from mm-hmm. there it's not a bad thing it's one of the longest professions in the fucking world if this is something you have to do this is the way to do it do not do this do not do that with my experience i didn't really have that so now with what i'm doing right now and all that i'm into and like the networking i'm doing it's just like with my experience i can like take that share my stories with like the people i've worked with and then like take it to take it to the street all in all sex work is a, l- a little bit of a dangerous thing to do because like you never know where you're gonna end up you never know who you're getting even involved today with. yeah you never know where your shit's gonna show up it's an atomic bomb hanging by a thread in some way not saying like it's sex work is great sex work is great it's dangerous it's the most you're being it's a very intimate thing that has become currency yeah so i understand what you're saying it, it's a natural thing but I can see that there's hints of danger or something could go wrong. Mm. And even today where we, we live in a digital age where yeah. 
anything would be tracked yeah. at this point. I feel like you'd have to be stupid to think that you can commit murder or something like that and get away with it at this point. Yeah. There's just no way you can do it. Yo, with role playing, like it scares yeah. me a little bit because like there are some people who have these rape fantasies. It's not a big deal, but it's like it's really dangerous being a sex worker when you're into those scenes, like the mm-hmm. BDS scene, BDS tied up. scene being tied up, yeah. and shit like that. Because like you just like you're you're letting go a certain type of control, and like you just don't know what's gonna happen. Like you remember that freak? You remember um, American Horror Story freak show? There was this um, yeah, yeah. scene of how um, she lost her legs. It started off as a porno. Yeah, and then the group showed up and cut her fucking legs off. That's a good example of how dangerous this shit can be. Yeah, you never know who whose house you're walking in, what might happen. And imagine that in like the 60s, the 70s. Any, I'm not even saying this century. Just imagine that yeah. any time before 2020, let's say, or 2015, when we have a collection or a record of every and uh, everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it is. It's it's fucking nuts. But I'm yeah. glad. I'm glad that you are. Um, you have your advocacy for it. Oh, yeah. And you've hosted events. I have. Yeah. Uh, I did this one thing called um, Only Stars, where it's like um, any any prospective content creators wanted to come network with other prospective content creators. I was there. Um, E-Rex Sean was there. Um, Laura Desire the was there. Yeah. Sean did like this little like how to film little thing with like he bought his little rig got like a little like high quality flash thing he was like so this is how you want to hold it and all this stuff like that you want to get this scene this scene this scene um laura taught um women how to like navigate throughout the scene um sx did um this um with sex tech like texting um sexting um sending photos like um blackmail like all that stuff like she like did stuff on that and like they just asked us a bunch of questions and just we're gonna have one soon like another one soon let me know i would love to <laughs> no i would i would love to i think you contacted me and i was in the middle of a whole bunch of shit and i couldn't do it but oh, the world was still falling apart yes i was in the middle of shit. yeah yeah no you know this is a way to give back mm-hmm. i would absolutely love to talk to other mm-hmm. content creators so just let yes. me know with yes. with of course ample time yes and then we can, oh we God, can score yes. it away Oh my god, oh, yes. So, Benny Blazon, when people want to find you, where do they go? Twitter, Instagram. Okay, so, I don't post a lot on Twitter unless it's like things. So, like, it's really like a two thing. If you really like all of it, is Blazon Benny Boy, B L A Z I N B E N N Y B O I. Good kid. Good. <laughs> um, <laughs> there you go. So, like, I highly suggest following my Instagram and Twitter. All right. I'm going to let you go so that way uh, you can get to to food. Yes. But, again, it was a pleasure. I I, I enjoy working with you, and I think that other studios need to contact you. (laughs) Because you are. You're a great performer. You do both, and that's awesome. And you're not a pain in the ass. Well. I can be. (laughs) To some some (laughs) bottoms, why not? (laughs) To some bottoms, why not? You've been watching Demystifying Gay Porn. I am your host, Ike Grande. Demystifying Gay Porn can be found on every podcast directory as well as YouTube. Demystifying Gay Porn is on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Telegram. If you like what you're watching and want to be a part of the process, head over to patreon.com backslash demystifying gay porn, where you can help this YouTube channel and I can continue making content like this. Once again, this is Demystifying Gay Porn. My name is Ike Grande. And if you watch gay porn, I've definitely helped you get off. Cheers. Cheers.